Thank you for watching this show on One Africa. Because you are part of our One Family, your voice is very important to us. Please take a moment to rate this show by scanning the QR code on your screen now and you can stand a chance to win fantastic prizes every month. T's and C's apply. International University of Management and the Namibian University dedicated to its people's future a hub of abundant opportunities Good evening, I'm Maggie Forciero. In the news tonight, Namibia not conducive for everyone, says Rashiyama. 47-year-old survives fire incident. Children see God's intervention over social ills and child abuse. Namibia's climate change adaptation measures are unrealistic, says scientists. And business on one comments corner, sport and the weather. Local music legend Tarashiyama has described the country's current socio-economic climate as unpleasant for many 33 years after independence. Shiyama stated that at the time of independence, people from all walks of life were united and the nation had faith in their leaders. But it is no longer the case because there is negative public perception against the government and tribalism still lingers on. We don't The 57-year-old reggae artist returned from Angola in 1990 when he was only 24 years old. At the time, Shehama was inspired by the events of the day as people were united in their cry for independence. But today, the artist said many Namibians continue to face daily hardships and politic breeds, hatred and mistrust among Namibians. Namibia is nice after independence, but Namibia is not nice after independence again to a lot of people due to what we did to ourselves. That's what I'm telling you. It is propaganda. Because if we were all working, to, working towards one goal, one common goal, to make every Namibian to feel at home, we should have done it. I'm not talking about government. No. That's where we make mistakes. When we say these things, people say, no, government. No. Let us take ownership of what we have. If we don't take ownership of what we have, we will never have anything, my brother. Because you will think, no, this, one's, this thing belongs to this tribe, so I don't care, I can just destroy it. It's wrong for people to think like that then we are not all working towards one common goal. Let me not say a lot of things. I still tell you, one Namibia, one nation. In addition, local afro jazz and traditional artist Erna Chimu stated the health and education sectors are far worse than they were before. I compare Namibia before independence and now, maybe the very thing that I observe, most is uh, before independence we had schools um, i can only talk about education and health in on, on these points I, i'm referring to before independence how it was at schools I, I think the kids had more respect for the elders the teachers as well and, and yeah you know and in africa you know we have this thing of any parent can just correct you 
And uh, compared to now, what is happening is now that we have this fashion, we have become fashion parents that are spoiling our kids. We've taken away the corporate punishment and now our kids that are ruling in the houses are now the ones controlling and terrorizing the teachers, which is not happening. Schools are dirty, things are falling apart at the hostels if you go. Uh, forever it's not maintained or I don't know what, what is happening there. Um, if you, the same with the, with the hospitals as well. Um, it's actually falling apart and it's a shame I saw to look at the Gratitude Hospital, the state that is in now compared to how, how it used to look before independence. A 47-year-old resident of Siebendalan was left homeless and at the same time suffered first-degree burns after he tried to put out the fire that engulfed his shack on Friday morning. The fire broke out after the man tried to light a cigarette. News on one found Artiminis going through the debris of what he once called home. According to Minis, the incident happened at 2 o'clock on Friday morning when he tried to light a cigarette and the matchstick dropped to the ground. Minis explained that the next thing he saw flames spreading around his shack and in an effort to put out the fire, he sustained burns. I got slapped like a walker, to a rock. I was sleeping and when I woke up I wanted to smoke a cigarette. It was dark, I didn't switch on the light. The match stick fell when I was busy lighting the matches and then the bed caught fire. My room, kitchenware, fridge and clothes and my two beds that I owned, all my daughter's clothes also burned. She still lives with me but her things were here and everything burned. Minis is a subcontractor at Paratus Hub, but he's unable to go to work as he is still recovering. Minis lost everything he had worked for. Therefore, he seeks assistance from Good Samaritans to assist with corrugated iron sheets, blankets, food and other necessities. Romana Jafta, a neighbor to Minis, said that they managed to put out the fire, but it was too late as nothing could be saved from the shack. Jafta added that although there is a fire brigade stationed at the border of Komasdal and Ochumise, the firefighters arrived late at the scene. Drop the water pipe over there and use buckets of water to stop the fire. It wasn't easy. Later on, we had to break down the corrugated irons. The fire brigade is very slow and they wait for everything to burn down before they come. I don't know. They should make a plan to have people on standby that can assist on time because like this, it won't work. Minis reached out to the councillor's office for assistance and the office promised to provide him with corrugated iron sheets so that he can rebuild his shack. For those who would like to render assistance to the victim, please contact him on 081-55-85364. About 400 children from Valfus Bay, led by the town's mayor, Trevino Forbes, took a prayer walk recently through the streets of the coastal town. The prayer walk was aimed at bringing attention to some of the issues facing the youth and how these social ills can be addressed through religious intervention. Von Urten made these remarks during the Namibia Institute of Corporate Governance Conference in Ventuk last week. 
Von Urten explained in detail why the government's budget for going green by 2030 is unrealistic when compared to the finances that are needed to do so. The conference was attended by various stakeholders across the mining and finance sectors under the theme Governance of Natural Resources. We have committed, for example, in the 2022 NDC that 193,000 electric vehicles will be on our streets by 2026. Today there are 60, I'm one of them. Today there are 60, by 2026 we want to have 193,000. So everybody who buys new cars, and there are not a lot of cars sold in the video, knows that this target is completely unrealistic. <coughs> So if we do the cost-benefit analysis on these, and there are other targets which I don't want to ridicule, but I just want to use as examples. But if we do the cost-benefit in terms of carbon dioxide bound, and the cost per carbon dioxide, the cost per ton of carbon dioxide, we are in excess of a thousand US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide mitigated. Does that make sense when the carbon price is at 20 US dollars today? No, it does not make sense. The senior manager of sustainable energies at National Petroleum Corporation of Namibia, Franz Kalenga, disagreed with the sentiments of von Urzen. Kalenga explains some of Namco's plans to roll out energy efficient infrastructure, which contradicts von Urzen's statements. As I earlier mentioned, that Namco is looking at rolling out electric charging uh, points at uh, our services at the library. Currently, Namibia has about, about 200 electric vehicles. It's just that you don't see them because there's lack of infrastructure. But they are charging, FNB has a charging point, Marwamba, Blue Mall has a charging point, BMW has a charging point. All these charging points, they are having vehicles that are charging. So I think that number is very interesting. And there are also certain funds that are already put aside for a fund in case the company doesn't meet those uh, obligations and the nation will just do it on their behalf. But briefly also, this infrastructure, they are being built in a way that you can still reuse them with the new energy transition. Mm -hmm. We are talking about regional integration. Angola is already pipelines. It's only for us to do new pipelines for us to evacuate ammonia or, 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 or green or uh, hydrogen. The sector lead for mining and natural resources at Rand Merchant Bank Namibia, Fabian Shanika, said that institutions should fund practical solutions to help the country transition into a climate resilient economy. And I think it's really important to highlight that climate resilient economy is. When we get into these discussions, it's actually quite easy to forget why we're doing this. Um, and it's about building a climate resilient economy. Um, adaptation speaks to building communities that are less prone to floods, to droughts, helping our farmers and so on. So our products, and I won't have the time to go into it, but the thinking is around um, uh, sustainable financing, breaking it up into what are we mitigating, what are we trying to adapt. Swipe on it and win! Come bank with us and stand a chance to win the grand prize of an eco-friendly hybrid vehicle or one of 40 fuel vouchers worth 40,000 Namibian dollars. Full tank, I believe. <laughs> to enter, simply make any purchase using your bank vintage Visa debit or credit card between the 1st of October 2022 and the 31st of March 2023. With your bank vintage Visa card in hand, let's journey together with every swipe. Visit bankvintage.com.na for more information. Protect yourself against fraud and never share your pin. T's and C's apply. Bank Vintage, a member of Capricorn Group. Welcome to Business on One. The Namibia Revenue Agency NAMRA has urged traders who import goods into the country to comply with requirements such as declaring such products with custom officials by providing the correct value and quantities to avoid them being seized. 
NAMRA's Chief Strategic Communications and Stakeholder Engagement, Stephen Dorokade, shared this while speaking at the handover of forfeited goods valued at $107,000 to the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture last week. Dorokade explained that NAMRA detains goods for various reasons, which include illegal or prohibited and restricted goods. Dorokade added that importers are given a 90-day grace period to allow them to fulfill requirements that they have not met. Well, the avenue is available. Remember from detention, I've indicated that there is a, a period of 90 days. And once it has been detained, you, there would be a notice of detention that will be given to the importer. That would spell what it is that the, the importer would need to satisfy. If it is a payment of additional money, so would be the case and you will be indicated as to how much needs to be paid to satisfy for these goods to be released. Mm -hmm. If it is additional documentation that is required, for instance, a proof to say, if you are saying that these goods are valued at so much from where I bought it, you would obviously need to indicate proof that indeed that is what you paid for the goods to bring them here. And those documents could be the ones that are required for you to submit. So the, the importer would have that grace period within which to, to, to satisfy the requirement. And on satisfaction of that, they would then get their goods. So the, 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 the opportunity remains. It's not as if it's a once-off thing and once the things have been detained. But I guess it's really with the start of the process. That's what we should speak to. And it's to say, when you are importing goods, there, there is an obligation that all of that needs to be declared with customs officials under the Namibia Revenue Agency. The Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture was identified as the suitable beneficiary of the goods which include backpacks, footballs and caps. The donation will be used to the benefit of our learners and in particular our most vulnerable learners. It's not every school who can afford to have just one ball in schools. We have many schools in the very remote areas who can't provide for themselves uh, these uh, items. Dorokade adds that failure for importers to make use of the grace period, NAMRA issues a notice of detention, urging them to first engage the agency to familiarize themselves with their requirements before importing goods in the country. Now that is all we have for you from the business front. Back to you, Maggie. Artificial intelligence, or AI as it's also known, is still perceived by some as a threat to job security. AI is basically um, it's a simulation of human intelligence uh, in machines. Rico Namibia was selected by the Namibian government to explore for oil and gas in the country. The journey to, from exploration and to production is one really long one. Time now for Comments Corner, your daily dose of comments from our social media pages. Activist Michael Amushalelo has called upon all young unemployed people to turn up with their CVs during the nationwide demonstration planned to take place tomorrow as the country celebrates its 33rd independence anniversary. Amushalelo stated that young people will submit their CVs at various government offices during the demonstration. Malakia asked which government offices will be open on Independence Day to receive petitions. Danger encouraged all unemployed youth to turn up. Chabe asked whether a person with a grade 5 should also bring their CVs. Hailenge said he would rather follow a march organized by Job Amupanda. Ndafailao wants to come wearing his graduation gown. Kandume said he supports activist Amushelelo 100%. That is all from Comments Corner. Be sure to engage on our stories on our social media pages for broadcast on News on One.
This is the drink Dale had when he tried bonding with his future father-in-law. I'm gonna go get some wood. This is Dale ah! finding a cliff. This is Dale's new look. This is Dale finding bees, making his way up a cliff. This is a dart. Dale? Welcome to the family, Dale Dobbs, where great stories start. Not a person's under the age of 18. And I suppose this is the bathroom? Yeah, that's probably the bathroom. Oh, there's somebody in here. Ah. Ura, ura, ura. Stupid. Lazarus, can I have a bit of water? My water? Yeah. But it, it's our community water. Based on Corona, I can't give I you know you. You yellow muro. Please reintroduce Tiki Box. Reintroduce Tiki Boxes. Boxes. <laughs> Save Namibian marriages, please. Time now for Sport on One. Athletics coach Henk Boerter, who is behind the success of Olympic medalist Christine Boma and Beatrice Masalinge, says he is satisfied with the current performance of most sport coaches in the country. Boerter, who won the African Athletes Coach Award in 2021 at the Confederation of African Athletics, says the sport fraternity has made positive strides despite numerous challenges faced by the Namibian Sport Associations at large. Athletics coach Hank Botter stated that Namibia's progress in sports is satisfying with a majority of the codes excelling in international competition. Hank Botter, who won Coach of the Year at the 2021 Confederation of African Athletics Coach of the Year, said that athletics has excelled in the past few years with Christine Boma breaking two world records at age of 17. As far as sports concerned, I believe that Namibia overall, as Namibians, we love sport and we are dedicated to sport. Uh, we might not uh, think we are good enough as some from stages to stages, but I think development in uh, Namibian sports has been really, really good. And uh, if, you, if you take the amount of people that we have in our country, only 2.7 million, and we have reached uh, World Cups with the rugby, we have uh, played on an international level with the soccer teams as well as our cricket team who excelled at two different World Cups and uh, qualified again for another one. Uh, that's just um, a very, very excellent result for sport. But my sport, athletics, I would say we have grown, especially in the last three, four years, with the result that we have just achieved with the, the two goals in, in the Olympics. And I just believe we'll just go better and better by the minute and by the day, and I'm very excited for Namibia. In addition, Botta said that Namibia has outdated training facilities that are needed to host international events that will bring world-class athletes, men and women, together. We do have a lot of difficulties in Namibia, difficulties in Namibia and obviously one of them is uh, our resources. We, we, we do not have, or excuse me, our facilities, we do not have quality facilities. Um, uh, our facilities is old and outdated and it's not up to standard but at the end being said that I don't think we need top uh, quality facilities to become top quality sportsmen and women the only reason why we would like to have these facilities is to host top quality events and to see some of these international stars to come and, and participate within our um, country and our sport loving nation can then meet and greet these excellent top uh, athletes, and sportsmen and women. Christine Bomba is expected to feature in the Athletics Namibia Senior National Turf and Field Championships in April at the Independence Stadium in Venduk. That is all the sport news we had for you. Please stay tuned for the weather forecast.
We have come to the end of tonight's edition of News on One. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. From me, Maggie Forciero, and the rest of the team, till next time. Good night. International University of Management, a Namibian university dedicated to its people's future, a hub of abundant opportunities. We are IUM for life. We are IUM. Thank you for watching this show on One Africa. Because you are part of our one family, your voice is very important to us. Please take a moment to rate this show by scanning the QR code on your screen now and you can stand a chance to win fantastic prizes every month. T's and C's apply. Where the fun is 100, 100.